Welcome to worship at the Lutheran Church of the Resurrection. We are gathered by Christ, growing in faith, sent to serve, empowered to witness. Our faith community welcomes all individuals, regardless of race, sex, gender identification, sexual orientation, economic status, age, disability, or family makeup. Child of God, you are welcome here. Just want to go over a, a few announcements. Uh, <clears throat> we welcome Pastor Wiesman today. He is our bridge pastor, and, and we want to thank him for continuing to share <clears throat> his gifts with us. Uh, uh, there is a care card in, in, in the narthex to sign uh, for, for Diane, no, uh, for Carol Blouth. Uh, who, who has been going through uh, a, a medical situation for a, a long time. Uh, also, I want to remind you that next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, November 3rd. And if there is anyone that you want to be included in the list that, that we specifically mention next Sunday that passed within the last year, please be sure to add it to the list. The list is on the board right when you first come in. And then I also want to remind you, listen up, next Sunday is Fallback Sunday. <laughs> so remember to turn your clocks after 12 o'clock to turn them back one hour. Uh, otherwise, we may not be here <laughs> when you come. <laughs> so I, I, I do want to reiterate that. Uh, and today is, is a very special day for us. Uh, we are celebrating two things today. Today is Reformation Sunday, uh, which is, which is uh, very important in, in the Lutheran Church and, and <coughs> is in honor of Martin Luther, the founder uh, of our religion. And also, um, we have a confirmation today. Uh, William Minnick will be confirmed today and we have a reception for him uh, afterwards uh, in Fellowship Hall, and we will have cake and coffee to follow. So I invite you all to join us in this celebration. Are there any uh, prayer concerns that you would like to offer up at this time? Howard? Uh, Damaris used to be a member here. She just moved away uh, to be with the family because she's, uh, her apartment's too ghetto, but she lives with somebody. And her long, long time friend, Vince, is really devastated by her actions. So Damaris and Vince uh, both need, need prayer. Okay, we will hold Vince and Damaris 
in our prayers because uh, Damaris will have to be leaving and going to a different area and, and, and Vince, we can give him some support also. Is there anyone else? Peace, love, and sanity. Peace, Amen. love, and sanity. Especially with the election coming up. Yes, oh peace, God. love, and sanity, especially with the election coming up. So Behind you, Susan. Yeah, I looked before and didn't see it. Yes. Uh, keep the vets in our prayers and also the areas of unrest which seem to be growing daily. Definitely for the areas of unrest that are growing daily. Fun. Continued prayers for Kim and continued prayers for, for all of our friends that are suffering cancer at this point and going through treatment. Okay? All right, then. <clears throat> we will now have the confession and forgiveness. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. That the cravings that war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering less. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our, our Savior, Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. you.
Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we pray, we thank you that our Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading comes to us from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest says the Lord, for I will forgive them their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans. Now we know whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction. Grace, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God put forth as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove all, it was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who comes in faith with Jesus then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works. No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave 
to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I'm going to ask the congregation to be seated, and if the kids want to come up. I'm going to ask you a question. I always ask questions. That's my problem. If I ask you, or if I tell you that this here, this thing here, the stall, if I tell you that that is really orange, what would you say? Am I telling the truth? No, I'm not telling the truth, am I? truth is, it's red, right? All right. And if I were to go and look out there and say, how come you two are the only people here today? Would that be the truth? No, that wouldn't be the truth. I'd be lying, right? Now, looking out at all those people, I'm going to ask them a question. Is that okay? Okay. I'm going to ask them a question. And then I want you to watch real closely. Then I'm going to ask you the same question, okay? Now, everybody out there, is there anyone out there, let's see, how can I word this right? Um, <laughs> who here has in their lifetime lied? Raise your hands. Did you notice something? Everybody, at least everybody that's telling the truth, <laughs> has raised their hand. Have you two ever lied? Yeah, yeah, of course. People do that. But what happens when you lie? Does it make things easier or harder? Harder. Yeah, because then you got to remember that lie, right? So if you told somebody that uh, you were in church six weeks in a row, and you weren't. You got to remember every time you see that person to be able to answer that you've been there six weeks in a row. And that could be kind of hard at times, especially if you're running to somebody that was there six weeks in a row and you weren't. <laughs> okay? So telling the truth is important. Now, Jesus said the truth will make you free. How does it make you free? An answer? But one thing you don't have to worry about being bound to all those lies and having to remember all those lies. But what it also means is that the truth is what Jesus wants from us. And he wants us to be truthful in all that we do. It's hard to do, but he wants that truth. And if we're truthful, we are following Jesus. And so that's important. So should we ask them out there if they're all going to tell the truth from now on? Yeah, we should ask them. All right, who out there is going to try to tell the truth all the time? Raise your hands. Okay, I got all these hands up. You guys going to try to tell the truth too? Raise your hands. Nobody said you're going to be perfect. We said try, right? Okay, thanks for coming up. You can go back down. <coughs> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> I have no idea what it is like to be a slave. I've never been one. There are times when I feel restricted, and that's uncomfortable. But I am still free. And if I think things through, I usually feel good knowing that I can move on from the situation where I am restricted. 
The slave doesn't have that option. But those who are granted their freedom and who then follow Jesus find that they have much more than they could have ever hoped for. The former slave finds that he has gained a community of love and a promise of salvation. He or she is free to live and is free to join with others, free to give his heart and free to embrace a faith. Now today, slavery is not as prevalent as it was in Paul's time. Slavery most often takes the form today of addictions, of job and financial instability, of sexual exploitation and abuse, and intellectual manipulation. Only when we are freed of such forms of slavery can we freely choose to embrace the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, a slave can embrace Christianity. Many have and do. But they cannot fully live accordingly. There are other forms of slavery out there, too. Some people are bound to groups who deny science and reality who still believe that the world is flat. Some people are bound to debunked conspiracy theories, looking only at news, books, or information provided by one political party or one spiritual group, and are thus afraid to ask questions. Some people are bound to manipulative hate groups and believe that violence is a Christian way to respond to differences in belief and lifestyles. All of these are inconsistent with the good news of Jesus Christ. Those who follow Jesus, his example and his words, understand that Jesus does not control his followers with fear. He calls for love, not hate for forgiveness, not punishment, for charity, not contempt, for unity, not division, and for peace, not violence. As those freed from slavery, as Lutherans, as Christians, who believe in the love taught us by Jesus, we need to lovingly restore them to freedom. Martin Luther accomplished in the Roman Catholic Church. He was a priest, a scholar, and a professor. He lived much of his life as a slave to the church, a slave to its non-biblical laws, its greed, and its tyranny of the time. He was a slave to the laws of the church and he confessed the smallest of infractions every time he would go to confession. He believed he was bound to sin and that sin controlled his life. He taught the ways of the laws of the church to others and he led worship as dictated by the church. As a professor, Martin Luther was also committed to his study of scripture. He studied the Old Testament using Hebrew texts, the original language. And he studied the New Testament using Greek texts, again, the original language. And as he studied the scriptures, in particular, the Psalms and Romans, his bondage to sin, his bondage to an unquestioning obedience to church law, and the practice fell gradually away. In Romans, he read that we are justified by faith, 
justified because of God's love given us as a gift. All because Jesus allowed himself to be crucified for us and to die for our sins. Luther saw that God, through Jesus Christ, was not the heavy-handed punisher that the church taught about, but that God wanted to be in a loving relationship with us through Jesus. He saw God's generosity and love and forgiveness of sins as he had never before and he saw that he had been a slave to a church that did not share Jesus' love. Father Luther began to preach about the love and forgiveness of Jesus in his church. Professor Luther began teaching in his classroom about the love of God and the forgiveness as told in scripture. And Martin Luther priest and professor and scholar, began writing pamphlets and books about all that he was learning from his studies of scripture, about the love and the forgiveness of Jesus. And word of Luther's new vision of God and Jesus began to be talked about by his students by educated and uneducated parishioners, by royals and church leaders. His words shared in sermons, lectures, pamphlets, and books created quite a stir. And then he posted his 95 theses. He posted them to provide his students with discussion material in it, Luther gave opportunity for his students to question the church's hold on them and to question the doctrine of indulgences. In doing so, he threatened the purse strings of the church. Indulgences, you see, were being sold to finance the building of St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome and to make possible for the church, church's leaders, the pope, and his cardinals to live in luxury and to wield great power. Indulgences, according to the church, suggested that sinners, that is, everyone, needed to purchase the pope's intercession for their sins. The belief was that the pope would influence God in a good way for those who purchased them and for their loved ones for whom they purchased these indulgences. Can you imagine the relief that was felt among the people as they listened to Luther? Their bondage to the church and their fear of God's punishment was being replaced with Jesus' love, with freedom, and with hope as the eyes of the faithful were being opened to the gift of Jesus' forgiveness and love, the sale of indulgences began to drop off. Bishops, cardinals, and the pope grew angry. Martin Luther soon became public enemy number one. Luther was subpoenaed to come to what was called the Diet of Worms really just a meeting at a place called Worms, to defend himself. <clears throat> there Luther was told to recant his writings, his sermons, and his lectures. But for him to do so would require him to deny the gospel, to deny the good news of Jesus Christ, and to go back to his former life of slavery with all of its fears of God's judgment and punishment. He refused to recant his work. 
And so Luther made a commitment to Jesus' love and forgiveness. He returned to Germany under the protection of his duke. But because of his commitment to the truth, to God's love, the church hung up what it became, amounted to one of posters. Luther could now be captured dead or alive. Without the protection of the Duke Frederick the Wise, and without the Holy Roman Empire's need at the time for financial and troop support from the royals, Martin Luther would surely have been burned at the stake as a heretic. And he would still, we would still be living in slavery, fearing God's punishment. Jesus' gift of love and forgiveness would be overlooked. And we would be buying indulgences, courting the Pope's prayers of intercession. Most of us who are here today have made our own commitment to the gospel, either when we were confirmed or when we were baptized as adults. But we making those commitments without having to worry about the threats of arrest and the possibility of being burned at the stake. Today, William Minnick will be confirmed and will commit himself to Jesus, his love and forgiveness as professed in the Lutheran Church. William, by doing so, will not need to worry about a threat of persecution like Luther did. But he will, as we do, have to face movements, both social and political and religious, that are angry, that claim to be Christian, but are not acting according to Jesus' example of love, are not following Jesus' example of service and self-sacrifice, movements that speak only of hate, retribution, and division. William will, with us, face movements and seek power at the expense of the weak, something, again, that Jesus never did. Your challenge, William, is to do your best to live as Jesus did, as Jesus said he wants us all to live, to resist returning to the slavery of sin, of anger, and of hate, knowing that this will not be easy, knowing that you will, on occasion, fall short and act unloving, as do all Christians, but knowing that you will share in the benefits of Jesus' promise of love and forgiveness anyway. William, you are joining the Lutheran Lutherans and Christians in general in a shared mission of spreading Jesus' love and forgiveness and helping the weak. You're being asked to yourself, forgive others and help others to live according to Jesus' love. This morning, we welcome you to this joy and to this struggle. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask at this time for William and his sponsor to come forward. I, oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Thank you. Thank you for standing up. That told me we have a hymn. Oh, by the way, the hymns are all in the green hymnal, if you haven't found them already. <clears throat>
William Ashton Minish has been instructed in the Christian faith and desires to make public affirmation of his baptism. That's good. Turn and face me. Pray. That's why I've got this with me. Not really so the congregation can hear me, but so they can hear me online. Okay. Dear friend, we rejoice that you now desire to make public profession of your faith and assume greater responsibility in the life of our Christian community and its mission in the world. Brother in Christ, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you a member of the church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from his word God's loving purpose for you and all creation. You have been nourished at his holy table and called to be a witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, therefore, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. And I'm going to ask the congregation to join in and respond as well. This would be a way for you to kind of reaffirm your own confirmation. Okay? Do you renounce the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. Lord of all, we give thanks for the whole church throughout the world. Open wide the paths towards unity between denominations so that all followers of Christ may join in shared worship and mission. God of grace, hear our prayer. Renewing God, as the dying leaves display their beauty, we are reminded that nature's cycle of life includes and requires both life and death instill in your people a mission of preservation and appreciation for trees, animals, and waterways threatened by climate collapse. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, in the spirit of reformation, we pray for all who cry out for relief from systemic oppression. May the hearts of those who occupy seats of power be reformed so that peace becomes the center of our life together. We pray for immigrants and refugees and for all who work with them. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Comforting God, be with all who are sick, suffering, or grieving in our own community and beyond. Surround them with the promise of your love, comfort, and grace that never ends. God of grace. Prayer. Divine guide, continue to challenge this community to be ever reforming in our ministries and outreach efforts. Inspire creative ideas among us so that the communal, grace-filled word of God remains at the heart of our ministry. God of grace, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in Christ's resurrection, you ensure that though life be wrenched away, death cannot win the day. May the truth of your saving grace through faith 
sustain our hope for life in you. God of grace, hear our prayers. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. Now you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear his word and share in his supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of our Lord Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And so please answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide you. I do, and I ask God to help and guide you. Let us pray. Don't kneel. It's okay. There's no kneeler here unless you want to move up there, but just stay there. Okay. Gracious Lord, through water and the Holy Spirit, you have made this man your own. You forgave him all his sins and brought him to newness of life. Continue to strengthen him with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in him your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in William the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. At this point, I will say that you are confirmed, <laughs> okay? And I do thank you for being here. Um, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. You were going to read that, right? Why don't you turn, though, and face the congregation? And you see it. Before I started going to church, I felt that something was missing in my life. Going to church made me feel amazing, knowing someone was there for me even if I couldn't see him, who is always there for me at my highest and at my lowest. Some of my gifts that I have learned and gained from the church are understanding, helping me understand more about God and how much he cares for me, and making me realize that, that other than him, I have my family and many others out there that would support me. Going to church has helped me provide addish, additional guidance in my life. This wisdom w the church passed down to me, as well as guiding me to the truth, and has given me multiple moments to pray to our Heavenly Father. There was also pi piety. At first, church felt like a chore and, and just something my dad just told me I had to go to every week. It was another thing for me to try. However, the congregation has received my family, and I will open arms, and I enjoy going every week. I want to be able to talk to and spread the word of God to others. I want others like me to be able to turn their lives around with God. I want to be able to guide people like he guided me. Going to church has also given me more fortitude I find that having a community has made it easier to open up. It is like a second home, which is also so welcome, welcoming and really inspiring. Passing of the peace. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with you.
We thank you for your continuing faithfulness in giving generously. The take <clears throat> and take the time here and now to lift up God's goodness and all God's good gifts. Offerings may be made through the offering plate, mail or electronically, including the online giving platform, tithe.ly. We thank you for supporting our mission, community outreach, and the mission of the larger Lutheran Church. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. From sunrise to sunset, this day is holy. For Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though through the night, though the night will not will not will excuse me, <laughs> and though the night will overtake this day. You summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so with choirs of angels, with all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. Betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Remember us in your love and in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come here, here is your God. And I want to invite those who are at home, who are following the service, who would like to receive communion, to please now take your bread, take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take your cup, take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. 